Looking forward, of course, six weeks from now in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and we're just going to do this all over again when it comes to the Maple Leafs, Ron. Um, what would you make of the deadline? I like the pickup of Edmondson. I like some of the depth ads. It didn't do anything crazy, but did you like some of their moves? Well, yeah, I liked them last year too. Uh, you know, True. I specifically liked them last year. So that that just shows you what a challenge it is. But Doers, uh, you know, as you know, Jay, we, uh, Kevin knew a little bit about him. I didn't see him a ton prior to him coming to TO, which is – you know, we, we tend to follow the teams that go on the broadcasts and for whatever reason, Wild don't make it to hockey night very often. So, uh, but he looks like a great penalty killer, great character guy. And and you, the key for me uh, with Toronto is you cannot rely on the core four to win you the series because someone's going to uh, have to break out on the third or the fourth line. Even Vegas needed the Nicholas Waugh line to win them the Stanley Cup. Keegan Colasar played a huge role. William Carrier is out right now, but that was a fantastic line for them, much the way Yanni Gord for uh, Tampa uh, when he had Goodrow uh, and uh, Coleman on his line. They were fantastic. Bonino was the third line in Pittsburgh when they were winning. Um, I remember Scotty Bowman, when he uh, came to Detroit, uh, and they said, we'll get you Fedorov. Don't worry. We'll get you some of these guys signed, Eiserman. He said, I'm not worried about them. Make sure you give me uh, McCarty, Draper. Uh, you know, that's that's the line I need. I need the foot soldiers. Um Maltby was the other guy on that line. So you that who's that line going to be? You know, they're they're right now when they get Tavares down to the third, maybe, uh, maybe that can be uh, you know that real factor for for Toronto. But they're going to have to figure that out. And right now with Marner out, obviously it's a you know they just got to get through this little stretch. But uh, when when you look at Camp, uh, you look at Dewar, uh, you know really dependable kind of two way players, but they're not offensive. None of them puts up thirty points, and you need somebody there. That can put like Nicholas Waugh won the Calder Cup. He, he's a guy that can put up 60 points. He probably doesn't uh, have to, but he can. And that's what I wonder about with the Leafs. Yeah, I think it's rare that uh, anyone wins the Stanley Cup that doesn't have a player that you're talking about step up in in magical ways and be that that huge facilitator of those big goals and, mm -hmm. you know, big plays and are just really kind of take the pressure off the big boys. Um, speaking of that, I want to talk to you about Ilya Samsonov. I mean, the, the resurgence he's had and the turnaround that he's had and the way that he's done it in, he went on waivers, went through, went down on paper to the Marlies, didn't actually report to them, didn't practice with them, didn't play with them. Not sure what he was doing, but to come back and have the record he has and, and find his game, I can't think of an example of a guy doing that much of a of a 180 in a single season can you run no I, I hear Campbell's playing well right now down in the a so maybe he'll prove to be one of those guys uh you know it's funny jay what i do remember is uh, great goalies always struggled in their second year uh tom barrasso ended up down in rochester after winning the calder trophy grant fuhrer had a great rookie season and then was down in the minors uh playing in moncton Marty Brodeur uh, had the two great years and then they missed the playoffs altogether in 96. So goalies do have this happen to them. Uh, and and it, you know, it's a mental game. Clearly it's a, it's gotta be the toughest mental. Uh, we always analogize, you know, uh, Brad Treliving's dad, Jim, when he was hiring for Boston pizza, he wanted hockey players because they're great teammates and they're, you know, they're, they work. Uh, but he said in a perfect world, I get, and I love golfers. He said, cause they're sort of, they have to deal with all the pressure themselves, but the perfect guy is the goalie because he's got to be a good teammate and he's got to deal with it all by himself. Uh, so he's the hybrid perfect employee. And, and, uh, you know, I, I give Kelly Rudy a lot of credit. He said to the, to Brad, you know, get him away from the rink, get him away from, you know, a skills coach, get him away from all that. Just let him reboot, let him mentally uh, take a breath. And it, it worked a miracle. Wow. I started the uh, Masterton campaign on the show the last couple of days. I think that would be a, an epic story. There's going to be some other guys involved in that combo, but uh, it's night and day from where he was two months ago. Mm -hmm. It's always day for Austin Matthews, Ron, as you know. Uh, needs 16 and 18 to get to 70, does he? He looks a little off right now. I'm not sure if he's sore yeah. again. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, uh, you know, just that recent sample size, I'd say probably not. But uh, my God, when he, you know, even if he's hurting a couple of these goals, you know, the touch you see last night, Bedard, <clears throat> I mean, oh. the two, yeah, you know, and that's Austin. He's got that, those magic mitts. Uh, Eichel scored, obviously, the overtime winner for Vegas. He's got those. Um, but Austin's got that amazing ability to uh, to feather it wherever he he wants uh he's he's like that confident putter uh so you know maybe he'll uh, he'll get it back um but as i said to, to my eye right now it looks like he's nursing something again and uh, he's got to get through that 
it's about insane to think that he could keep that pace for too much longer as much as he has done it. But I don't know if you heard uh, us talking before we came on, Ron. We're talking about the playoff format. Do you like it like this in the wild card situation? I mean, with you know two playing three in the first round, or did you prefer the the one versus eight, or do you think I did? Something different yeah, I did, Jay. And I and I would like to see them uh, increase the number of teams that get into and have that have the wild card be the two out of three series for the teams that finish sixteen through twenty in the NHL. Uh, and then go one versus eight. I love the variety of it. Um, and I love the fact that you you protect, uh, supposedly you protect the better team from 82 games by giving them the, the easier opponent in the first round. This, you know, inevitability of Toronto having to face Boston uh, and Tampa. And I know some will say cry as a river, but uh, <laughs> I, I just get a little bit tired of it. I, I'd like to see one versus eight. I loved it way back when, when one played 16 and it was Edmonton against Philadelphia. Uh, and it was electric. Uh, you know, Edmonton gave them all they could handle. So th- there, there was great intrigue in those supposed mismatches. Hmm. What Ron, did you guys uh, say? Maybe, I didn't. I didn't hear. What did you yeah. say? Yeah, I'm. I'm on board the same thing. I just don't. I think that it takes away from you know the reward from an 82 game season. You know, mm-hmm. you you're like you could finish like third in the NHL and you're playing the second best team in the, in the first round. It's kind of like you know it's set up already. I understand when they in, when they introduced this i thought well this sets up for some good individual rivalries that'll spend the the years and the test of time but the more i look at it and see how things shake out it just doesn't quite seem like they're uh, rewarding the players for the the long grind of an 82 game season yeah agreed yeah ron i wanted to ask too about it and i'm right there with you guys i think you have to find a way to reward those teams like vancouver's the the team i brought up as you know ron they could take on vegas in the first right. round like what yes. a what a prize right well so that kind of flips the argument though so there's there's yeah. a team heavily favored and, it, and it's just again beware the team that's good that has a bad season uh and that they would fall into that trap there's no perfect model i don't think but i i like the variety i i just you know back in the day too i can remember when it was the adams division and we'd see montreal boston every year i suppose it built a great rivalry but i don't really recall it being that i remember it being a little tired you know having to see that same matchup i would prefer prefer the variety we need more fighting that's the solution <laughs> that's i want to get your i want to get your opinion on fisticuffs coming back like teams are calling up tough guys left and right i'm loving mm-hmm. this and and i'll tie that in i'd be remiss if i didn't ask you about the state of officiating in this league and maybe i become that guy where i just bitch and complain about everything but what have you made of of the officiating this season and fighting being back it's crazy well, David Adams Richards is a senator now, but he's a writer who wrote a book called Hockey Dreams. And it was kind of a fictional account of the 72 series. But uh, I interviewed him one time for Hockey Day in Canada. He has a great line, when are we most Canadians? And his line is when we drop the puck. Uh, maybe uh, yours, Jay, would be when we drop the gloves. But anyway, he, it's it was a great line. And he also said, you know, Ron, whatever they do to the rules and however they referee it, we kind of get used to it. Uh, so I, I think that's, uh, you know, the heart of the matter. Like, I, I remember... Uh, you know, obviously the Rempe hit here in Toronto. And, and I remember also uh, when uh, Ottawa had that empty netter uh, fiasco with Ridley Gregg, and it just kind of had a flash of, okay, here come the playoffs. And when we make a, a statement about a game between Edmonton and Vancouver, we cannot win, right? Uh, th- there'll be huge controversies uh, forthcoming and just get ready for it. And that's that's part of it. And as far as the, the fighting, I mean, uh, it, it's just great to see uh, the energy, the caring, right? Uh, and, and I think, again, of OMJ, you were part of it. Uh, I've always believed, because I refereed for 23 years, that truly the refereeing happens from the coaching staff and from within the glass. The, the players will police themselves if you let them. Uh, you don't have to you know, squeeze that uh, bird so tight that it's dead. Uh, you, you don't want it to fly away on you either as a referee, but um, there, there's just a l- bit of electricity around the energy uh, of, a, of a good fight and a noble fight. Um, you know, I saw it was the weirdest thing. Uh, Hathaway fought for Philadelphia about three weeks ago and nobody on the bench slapped their sticks on the boards when he was coming off and it was like huh. john tortorella's teams not <laughs> you know hitting the wall uh, it was like that none of it made sense so uh we're all a little old school and there's nothing wrong with that nick yeah that's a little that's a first i would say for sure but uh speaking of the tough stuff i saw that you had a bit of a re- reunion there with grapes he turned 90 which is uh 
hard to believe. Um, how much do you stay in touch with him and, and how's he doing? He's good. Uh, really good. And I wanted that picture of Jay to get out there. You know, it's, I, I, you know, obviously that story, it's like a Netflix series for heaven's sakes, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. and it's going to be, you know, and I want to be respectful because for some it's an open wound, you know, fans and whoever, uh, and it's a trigger. So I, I don't mean to be ever disrespectful, but I love that photo of me and Don. When I, we were doing Hockey Night on the weekend, Kyle Bacosca showed me and Dick Irvin and Bob and Harry, uh, Bob Cole and Harry Neal. And I just looked at those photos and I thought, you know, I got this great pick of Don and me and I want to put it out. I want it to be me that puts because if I die this afternoon, it's locked in my phone and gone, right? And it is a great, uh, we had a great uh, get together just uh, the day before his 90th and uh, we're good. And there's a, you know, always going to be, as I say, a racket and uh, lots around it. But uh, it was great to see Don. We had a great hour and a half together and uh, the photo I love is magic. And uh, yeah, it was neat to see him. And, he, and he's, he's great. I said, you want to come back on? He, ah, I don't know. <laughs> so, but, would be nice. But uh, yeah, anyway, he's, he's doing great. Good to see you guys posing, together. I'm posing a reunion yeah. on this show. You, Ron, yeah, Don, that'd be let's good. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. I think it would be, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it would be fantastic. But you know what? He's uh, he's doing his podcast and great. And uh, yeah, it was it's just lovely to see, uh, you know, that he's still got that twinkle. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, you got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching.